She is one of the three new faces that you'll see on San Antonio City Council. Councilwoman Marina Alarete Gavito. She represents District 7. That's Anna Sandoval's old seat. And she was just sworn in last week. And Councilman Alderete Gavito joins us now live on our KSAT Q&A. All right, we're going to start with your priorities. You have listed homelessness, loose dogs, and infrastructure as your top mm -hmm. three priorities. Yeah. Tell us more about that. Yeah, that's right. So I just got finished block walking all throughout District 7. And the top concern I heard from all throughout was safety and security. And I think it shows itself in different ways. You know, a lot of residents are increased, are nervous about the increased homeless population. And, um, you know, they don't feel safe going down some of the streets that they used to go down. They don't feel safe going to some of the parks that they used to go to. And so the city council has some great long-term solutions in play, but I think we're exploring what we can do in the short term. Uh, one of the other concerns regarding safety was a lot of loose, vicious dogs. Mm -hmm. Uh, out in the community, and we can attest to it, our last week of block walking, we were chased down by some loose, uh, vicious dogs, and luckily we were able to get away. But, I mean, this is, this is a concern that residents are seeing and feeling and facing every single day, and so we have to address it. And infrastructure always seems to be a top yeah. priority. Why is that, and, and what can you do to kind of change what's happened before? Right, yeah, so Bandera Road is a a pain in a lot of district residents' side, you know, and we really want to make sure that we get that project moving. Uh, really want to make sure that we're listening to the residents who live up and down Bandera Road to make sure that their input is heard and that we, we move that project along. It's It's been going on for a couple of years and it needs that final push and re-engagement. Also on infrastructure, you know, there's a lot of streets that don't have sidewalks where kids travel to go to school. Um, there's a lot of aging infrastructure, streets that need to be maintained. So that is always a heavy lift, and we're excited to dig in and do the work. Yeah. You took your oath just a few days ago. Yeah. Um, there's a big switch when you're a candidate and then when you actually become councilwoman. Yeah. Right? So what, uh, what, do you, what is your priority right now? We already talked yeah. about priorities, but as sure. far as I'm sure they've changed mm -hmm. since you've been in. Yeah. You know, I think, uh, well, one of the first things we're doing is setting up a really great team, you know, and so that we can all support the residents of District 7, making sure that that tr transition was seamless for them, making sure, you know, our constituent service director and her team is set up and in place and attending neighborhood meetings and working with the residents and um, and staying close to them. Your father was on the city council, yeah. late 70s to 85, if I remember mm -hmm. right. Was this something that you always thought, maybe I'll do that. Maybe yeah. I'll follow in my father's footsteps. Yeah. No, actually, not not really. I um, I think growing up in that in a political family, you know, it wasn't it's not always the easiest, right. you know. And so uh, when I had moved to Chicago for a while and when I came back, I was serving on different boards and nonprofits, uh, not uh, nonprofit organizations and doing great work there. Um, but I wanted to do more. And so, um, you know, did my homework and said, where could where could my skill set be the most utilized? Is it at the local level, state level, federal level? Um, so um, researched and figured out that for me, it's at the local level because that's where I can have the most impact. That's where my skills uh, can go the furthest. And so here I am. You have. Uh We've talked before. Mm -hmm. uh, you were on Zoom. You weren't in the studio with yeah. us before. But we talked about the digital divide and right. how big an issue it is in San mm -hmm. Antonio. Mm -hmm. It was just exacerbated during the pandemic. Right. Do you take some of that knowledge mm -hmm. to you, with you, to city council? I mean, I, I noticed yeah. that wasn't one of your priorities, but the, the digital divide, and, and I'm sure there are parts of District 7 that feel it as well. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, back in 2019, over 20% of residents could not access the internet and they couldn't access it because of they didn't have access to fiber, they couldn't afford it. Um, there's a digital skills component to it. And so it absolutely still leaves so many of uh, residents in San Antonio and Bexar County behind. So I'm glad to have had that experience and knowledge gained from my previous employer and, and absolutely going to take that to council and, and continue pushing for it. Now that you're officially a leader, we wanted to ask you about the situation that happened on the southwest side, where unfortunately mm -hmm. that 46-year-old woman mm -hmm. was killed on Friday uh, mm -hmm. by three San Antonio police officers. Now that you're a leader, people are going to look to you for answers and yeah. ask you questions. Mm -hmm. So can you give us a comment on that? Yeah, you know, I mean, first and foremost, my condolences to Melissa Perez's family. Um, this was is a horrible incident, you know, and, and so definitely want to extend my condolences to them. 
I think that there was, you know, one of the good things that came out of it was the city's quick response. I, I believe within less than 24 hours, around 24 hours, we all saw the body cam footage. Um, and also, you know, um, there was swift action taken by Chief McManus. And so I think that that was good, that w the public wasn't left waiting. There was transparency um, and there was quick quick action. I think it also highlights that we as a community need to do more to address mental health crisis in, in our city and really lead there. Um, we're a compassionate city and we need to make sure that we're responding to mental health crises that way. I, I, I was struck with the chief standing there Friday night and he mm -hmm. had city manager Eric Walsh right mm -hmm. next to him. He had people from internal affairs there as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was my question is, what as a city council person mm -hmm. can you do? You talked about sure. mental health. and I mean, it, 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 are we doing enough right now as yeah. a city when it comes to mental health? Well, um, I, I think this leaves the opportunity and uh, us to question, should we be do doing more? You know, what are the protocols? Are they enough? Um, what happened here? You know, we can assess the situation and learn from it because we all know we would never want this to happen again. Yeah. Part of this is uh, now that you're uh, on city council, you have other colleagues to work with. Mm -hmm. And uh, how has that transition been? Because you yeah. do have to, I mean, it is about making deals. It is about, you know, sure. forming friendships or yeah. alliances. How has that been? It's been great. You know, um, I had a lot of relationships with the council members beforehand. I think almost all of them endorsed my candidacy. So we had great working relationships. I think in council, you can't do anything alone. You know, you need six to get stuff done. And so, you know, I have a good foundation of those relationships and look forward to building and working together to to move the needle forward. What's the biggest surprise so far? The biggest surprise is everyone's like, hi, councilwoman. And I'm like, I'm muddy, <laughs> I'm muddy now. Shoulder, <laughs> like, who are they talking about? Yeah, yeah, I'm still muddy now. <laughs> How do you feel about it being a majority female? I love it. Okay. I love it. I'm the mother of two daughters, and I think this is great for them to see um, and great for them to experience with me. Yeah. What do you want people to know that they didn't get during while you were running for this seat? Yeah, I think uh, one, well, one of the things is I want people to know that our team and myself were available and accessible to all the residents in District 7. I'm looking forward to serving the residents of District 7 as well as our whole city. So, um, you know, I think that availability and accessibility is extremely important. Okay. Yeah. Marina Alderete Gavito, yeah. thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Congratulations. Yes. Thank you. By the way, on Wednesday, uh, new councilperson Sakor will be with us. Mm -hmm. And then on Thursday, new councilman Mark White will be with us on yep. KSAT Q&A. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. thank you. Thank you so much. Keep up to date with all of San Antonio's top news, weather, and so much more by clicking the like and subscribe buttons below. And once again, thanks for watching KSAT.